This anime is without a doubt in my mind one of the best anime that you can watch in winter 2020's anime season. This show is charming, it's adorable, and it's got its element of mystery with our lead character Hanako's backstory and his murderous past and just everything about it is so good. Like the world building and how they explore like the rumors and how basically these spirits either come to be in their current form or just how they can change in the future. Like there's so much detail to this for such it almost has like this feeling of basicness, but it's doing something so complex in the process, and I love it. Like every time I look at these characters, I love everything about it. It's honestly my favorite art design of the season. The character models are just so well detailed. They're so crisp and polished. Everything about their character designs is so memorable. They use like this like manga approach of like manga paneling in. Obviously there's some basic animation, and then at times there's some insane animation when they get into more action-oriented sequences. But there's just like this simplistic beauty while also being a lot more complex really underneath the hood that the longer you watch the more you see about the world and its characters and that's fantastic. Like something that could easily have happened in this show is they could just make our main female just this kind of damsel in distress. Every time something bad happens we have Hanako come in slice it up and then all is good. And that could be enjoyable for a season, they could do that, but what they did in this episode is immediately let her recognize that every time this seemingly happens, this is now the second time in probably just a couple of days, that I've had to be saved by him. But what they did was they gave her a quirk that Hanako doesn't have, the ability to change rumors. I really like seeing just the idea that there's this creature that people are spreading rumors of, hey I'm losing my stuff, oh you lost it too, it has to be this one spirit and they just give it a very murderous plot, and based on what we see, it does look like a creature of death and despair. But as the episode progresses, we learn that's not how it actually always was, in that they were just almost like cute little bunny rabbits who used to, you know, steal candy, play pranks, but then the rumor spread that they were a murderer, and that's ultimately how they had to change. And the idea that basically these apparitions, these ghosts and spirits and things like that, can actually change by word of mouth is a really interesting concept, and to have someone who basically can't even be touched by normal humans more often than not, you have to have some form of a contract or a connection with them, as clearly our two characters do. So to have someone like her, who yes, will probably have to be saved in the middle of combat when you see a giant creature, that how the hell is a general girl going to deal with that on her second day on the job? But what she can do is things that he doesn't have the ability to change things and make it so that he doesn't have to kill these spirits and maybe have the chance to actually save them. As for him, the ability to save them is literally cutting them apart. And I think the idea of having something that's been there for generations and was so nice and peaceful, maybe a bit of a prankster, but now Hanako had to actually kill it, like, that has to be painful. And you can definitely understand the despair in a character like his, his eyes. Like, I mean, just look at what he's had to do. Like, apparently he killed in his life, which probably is true. And the idea that apparently what he's doing is like salvation for his sins, and just having to have rumors spread either that you're a horrible person or maybe you'll grant wishes, like, depending on how rumors spread, he could become a demon or someone very lovable as he currently is. Maybe he's definitely mysterious and maybe a little frightening at times with how he does things, but still, the idea of how rumors and things like that can spread adds a lot of possibilities for the two's dynamic and what could happen to their relationship depending on what the wish granter Hanako will do in the future depending on how things are spread by word of mouth and just the simple idea that if you carry candy in your pocket you will be fine and won't be killed is such a really simple but elegant way to end this apparitions arc which was just incredibly fulfilling. I really appreciate the two's dynamic because it's both so adorable it's also hilarious, but it also has this element of danger, and that element of danger makes it incredibly compelling, as if you don't know should she stick by this character, or should she run away in fear, because, you know, maybe in his original life he was a bad person, or maybe even just before the rumor got to where it currently is about a wish granter, maybe he was a very bad person, but maybe now he's fine. There's a lot of ways that they can take their relationship, and just the idea of like throwing it in her face, like, oh, you can even be friends with a murderer, oh, just kidding, like, there's a lot of ways to grow this relationship both in a very positive and extremely negative direction, and I'm excited for that. Something that I'm not always the biggest fan of would be the flirtatious nature between Hanako and Yashiro, however, I really appreciate it here, as I think they just, the way they balance it, they definitely set it up as like, oh, why would you want to go on this boys date when you can spend time with me? They're setting it up all romantic and you're like, okay, let's see where this is going. And then he'll hand her a mop to basically clean the floor, right? They definitely set it up as like the whole like will they, won't they? And 
the whole idea of like it's a spear right would you even want to but i like that idea of how they definitely they kind of bait you in with the romantic tensions and flirtatious natures but they also make sure to reel it back in with comedy so it doesn't just feel like they're playing into a trope the trope's there, but they're doing it in such a way that it becomes a unique entry to this world. And hell, we even get introduced to another character in this episode, but the whole idea of just wanting to banish this spirit and then being very dumbfounded when you see a human girl protecting the person that you were trying to kill because you thought that they were hurting her and you wanted to protect her, and it's this whole ball of mess, and then you get some pretty fun animation. Like, I really do enjoy the idea of, like, the electricity in this episode, and I wasn't even thinking about how the user... Most likely he's probably getting shocked himself, but just to see how it was like, oh shit, this is actually getting serious. They're bringing up the murderous past and you're seeing like, is he actually taking her hostage? Like what is going on? To then just a little flick on the forehead being like, all right, I win this time. There is so much we don't know about Hanako and that's both in a very exciting feeling, but also a worrisome feeling because what if he is a horrible person, right? What would happen to Yasho? Just someone who thought, like, this is friendships. And just the idea that what they really set up in this episode is how rumors can really shape apparitions. Like, there's a lot of possibilities for things to go wrong. And I am all for that. Like, I love that type of stuff. While also laughing my ass off and just being charmed by the amazing character interactions. There is so much that we've learned in two simple episodes that have charmed us, have made us laugh, but also have made us worry about where this could go. And that's how you know they're doing a great job. And I mentioned how much I love the character designs, but something that's been really fun is the idea of the static radio. When we learn about rumors and just a story or a spirit or how they're acting, you got someone on the radio talking to us. I love how they filter the voice acting. It is so creepy, but also like kind of adorable, all wrapped up into one. So you kind of want to be like, okay, I kind of got a shiver up my spine, but I'm also kind of like intrigued by what she's saying. It's such a great mixture of like layering in those effects that they don't have to go into. But it adds so much to that kind of like, oh my god, we're actually hearing an old story from the past, and it feels like we should run away, but it's also kind of cute just to see a little rumor on the street, or rumor in the halls, is how I guess I should say, because it is a school. It's so great to see that play out, and just once again, I leave an episode of Hanako, and just, I love it. It is so goddamn good, and this series is just beautiful. I love the detail to its world. It's a simple school setting, but it doesn't really feel like high school as you typically see it in an anime where it's just a general hallway, a classroom, maybe you got a fun club room here or there. Like, you can literally look at the bathroom in the show and it looks good. Like, they just stylize it with such brilliant use of colors and just really interesting details to make it feel like this does feel like a spiritual world, but also mundane all wrapped up into one. So as we walk the kind of thin line of like seeing ghostly ghouls and things like that, and then just general characters walking down the hall going to class, it feels like the transition, it's completely natural. It's seamless. You can't even tell the difference because the way they stylize everything, it makes it work both in the mystical but also the mundane, which is something I think a lot of times yokai series, a series such as this, get wrong, where like they have these like ghosts or spirits floating around, and you can tell they don't belong there, but a lot of times the stories are trying to make it feel like they blend into the world, just sometimes you don't see them all that often. So here, they're actually blending it in such a way that it makes it feel seamless, so then when we get those comedy scenes, the manga paneling and things like that, or just the really interesting Sakka, which had popped up a couple of times at the end of episode 1, at the end of episode 2 now, it just feels so good, and this is a production that just screams attention to detail. There's a simplistic beauty definitely there, but there also has a lot of complexity, and I think the idea of presenting so many of these scenes as fairly basic manga panels popping up, funny reactions, little simplistic nudges and winks and a nod to the viewer, it's fun, it's cute, but then when you look into, say, Hanako's character as a whole and just the little glimpses of backstory and kind of foreshadowing that we got, there's a lot there, and then you look at how Apparition stories are kind of spread as rumors, you know, like, there's a lot there as well, you can definitely focus in and say, oh, this is funny, this is cute and silly, it's slice of life, it's very basic, and it is, but then there's also this very deep layer going on underneath the hood, and you know the longer you watch it, the longer you see these characters, you learn with them, you grow with them, you fight with them, maybe you fear them. We're going to see so much of this series that is going to feel a lot more complex, and I have no doubt in my mind that this series will only get better with time, like an aged wine. I've heard a lot of good things about the manga, I heard a lot of good things basically before this anime even started up, so I checked out a couple of chapters just to see how is this anime really going to look, and I was like, this should be really good, but this anime adaptation is blowing expectations away. Like, I thought the production was going to be pretty good, don't get me wrong, I mean, the trailer looked like it was going to be very fun and comfy, but just to see the level of detail going into, like, the voice acting or how they're just taking such a basic idea for a plot, but then making it into something so complex, which a lot of times a story like this, oh, a murderous ghost pass, and then 
you know, you got this like will they won't they romance plotline. It could easily fall flat on its face, but based on these two episodes, it feels so good and is probably top three of the season right now for me. Obviously, things change over time the more episodes you watch, but this show two weeks in a row took my breath away. It is so goddamn good, and I love the characters across the board, and I can't wait to see how the cast is going to evolve and where they're really going to take Hanako's backstory because it's very twisted, and I love a good twisted backstory. What did everyone think? Either for fans of the source material anime originals like myself, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to drop a like, and remember to hit that subscribe button if you have been new around here. So until next time, everyone, please take care and have a good one.